part of the brain than we do, really can, we can work with them, tips and tricks for working with them, appreciating them, and um, bringing them into the fold as we form teams later on and start to maximize um, the strengths of the individuals that we'll be working with. Let's see, I, there's a question here from our fr one of our friends from India. How can a green circle adapt to the tech and innovation considering, he says, my degree is about engineering things. Okay, so there's all kinds of different things that you can do that activate different sections of your brain. So if you're a green circle and you need to activate one of the other parts, think about, and I can even, um, I'll, you know what, I'll send some additional documents to Julia later, and Julia, sorry, uh, later, and she can share those out with the group. But there's little exercises that you can do that activate those sections of the brain, that different types of games or crossword puzzles for the master coordinator, or, you know, just different things, doing something competitive if you want to engage the front left portion of your brain. Little things that you can do that actively engage the opposite quadrants of the brain. So I will send those when, I, when I'm done here, I will send those to uh, Yulia and she can share them with the group. Awesome, that would be fantastic. I'll also send uh, in the deck, there's a sheet that page that we didn't get to cover about great tips for communicating with those different quadrants. So I'll make sure to send that in a separate PDF as well so everybody can open them up on the computer. And Julie, we have another question about what um, quadrant is most dominant for geniuses? It is the purple imagination bubble. <laughs> the oh. highest, the, if you're going to separate it out, the, the group that has the highest IQ oftentimes fall, when they're tested, they turn out to be purple triangles. But I will say that, or I will say this with one holdback, oftentimes the purple imagination bubbles are geniuses, they have very high IQs, but they don't always perform as such, which means that you're constantly learning. You've got the squirrel, the squirrel thing going on, right? It's like, oh, I wanna learn this thing. And you learn that and you get a lot of information. And then it's like, oh, I'm curious about this because you're constantly moving forward. And building a foundation is, is more of the master coordinator skill set. So oftentimes they have a really high IQ, but they're constantly moving careers and constantly doing things that that makes them seem scattered. And um, you said that you're going to send your presentation to Yulia, correct? Yeah, she has the whole deck, but what I'll also do is sit, I isolate those a couple of slides that you can do just as a PDF download. All right, awesome. So awesome. yeah, we'll share that with everybody because I know um, a couple people have asked for that. Thank you so much, Julie. It was Absolutely. fantastic. And I, I apologize again for the out. hiccup. I'm like, oh my goodness, of all times to lose power. We wouldn't be the, at the hackathon if we wouldn't have something like that. No <laughs> worries. Okay. This is awesome. Thank you again. Absolutely. And we're live on YouTube. So congratulations. Let's show begin. All right. Ab fabulous. Well, it looks like we've got 48 people. Um, participating in Zoom right now. I am sure that that number is going to change as we um, get into things a little bit, but it's 2.13. So I think we're going to um, kick off what we're doing. So Julie was a fantastic um, introduction to sort of get us motivated and thinking about ourselves a bit and how we can use our great skills to connect to the problems that we're facing today. Um, so thank you. Julie, and let's see, we're kicking off now, two o'clock, a little bit late, 2.14. I am gonna talk super quick to get us through logistics so that we can get to the important stuff though. But I have a bunch of slides we're gonna share on just the logistics of the event and then by five o'clock. So that's only, that's two hours and 45 minutes away. We will be forming teams and get to the important stuff, which is everybody will start happy. So you wanna move it, um, I don't have control of the slide deck, so you can move to the next slide. Okay, but also you can take over the screen <laughs> if you want. So you if you feel start. comfortable. No, I'm good, whatever you wanna yeah. do. We're okay, good? we're good. Okay. So as Julia said, we are live streaming on YouTube and recording the event. Um, you can see that in the top left corner of your screen that we're live on YouTube. All right, let's go to the next slide. And t-shirts are on the way. Yulia, what do you want to say about our t-shirts for <laughs> Hackathon 
Access 2020. Yes, this is the preview and teaser. The physical t-shirts will be sent to those who will submit their applications um, no later than tomorrow, 1.45 p.m. And another requirement to be able to deliver, you have to be our t-shirts. We will be delivering those, shipping those only to New York Staters. Sorry about that, but come join Hudson Valley, New York. We will be happy to have you here, right? Relocate. <laughs> You're not here yet. Um, and thank you to Ari, right, for designing our logo this year again. Yes, yes. Yeah. You see how cool this one is. Yeah. Everything is upside down, but readable. <laughs> awesome. All right, next slide. So some logistics, and I don't think we've held true to some of these yet, but um, Zoom is our main stage. And all speakers, panelists, side events, um, you know, Julie's presentation, all of our presentations tomorrow afternoon from our teams, those will all be delivered here in Zoom. So this is the main stage for our event. Everyone is muted by default. I don't think that's true right now, um, but if need be, we can take care of that. Hopefully we can let it go for now. Um, Zoom chat will be disabled. Actually, we still have the chat up but that's because people are sharing so many great things that I wanna see what's, what's coming at us. So let it go. Um, we encourage everybody to use video, of course. I know some people are comfortable with that. Some people aren't, um, but if you wanna turn on your um, video, that'd be fabulous. So please make sure your real first and last name appears on the screen. You can see under my name, under Dana's name, under Yulia's name, under Ludmilla's name, Mike's name, first and last name. So if you can do that, that would be fantastic. Um, add talk. So um, all talks will be broadcast live and recorded to our YouTube channel. Um, we'll add the link here later because we are going to make this slide deck available at some point. So you can click on the links that you need to. But um, so but like I said before, we are broadcasting. All right, Yulia. The link, the link will be on the Discord so you can get the link it's already published, actually, on the Discord. Make sure you're on Discord. Yep. Let me just, um, OK. Some of you, I mean, so we are muted. We aren't muted. But um, if you want to applaud, and you can use your reactions button in the, in the bottom of the screen. I'm not sure what um, reactions you have. But if you want to, you can use those reactions down there. Um, so that would be great. Next one. And Zoom logistics, raising your hand. So um, this is just a quick overview of Zoom for anybody who hasn't been in here um, that frequently. But under participants, you will see a toolbar with some options. Yes, no, um, go slower, go faster, and then more. If you click on more, you will see the option to raise your hand or lower your hand. Um, there's other options for clapping, coffee break, all kinds of stuff there. So you can use that to uh, clap your hands as well. All right, next one. So at some point, we do have our sponsors here tonight. And later in our um, slide deck, we have specific slides where we'll welcome them and be able to, they'll be able to unmute themselves and to talk to us about their participation. We ask the sponsors to please um, put their name and also the organization that they're representing there. And Henry, thank you for the tips on how to rename yourself in Zoom. That's very helpful. So Henry's put that in the chat box. See, that's why we leave the chat box open because everybody helps. So that's great. Thank you for that. Um, so project pitches. If you haven't um, submitted to pitch yet, you can do so here. Um, Julia, can you? Uh, just throw that into the chat so folks can see it and click on it in case they need to. So you'll submit okay. the form to indicate your project idea and that you'd like to pitch. Yep, Yulia's going to do that right now. Um, and the spreadsheet is open to everybody. And that's how we will um, call you to pitch. So when we get there, um, I'll start with that spreadsheet of anybody who submitted in that on that form. But if you haven't, I will ask folks um, if they'd like to submit um, or, or to pitch rather. 
and we will um, certainly give you the stage to pitch. There, Julia's posted the link in the chat box, so we're in good shape there because we want anybody who wants to, to pitch your idea. When you pitch, you'll have 60 seconds to do that. And um, then people will be able to get a sense of your project, who you're looking to work with and who you need to work with. And we'll put our teams together. All right. So up oh, here's the form again with the QR code. So if you need that, you could leave that up for a bit. Um, we are using... So there we go. All right, you can go to the next one, Julia. So the, these are some of our sponsors and we'll be hearing from some of them later, I think. Um, pitch time, I think our pitch time will be, we're thinking pitching is gonna start around, I don't have the schedule in front of me offhand. I'll get that in a minute to everybody. Um, but this is our sponsors and we um, will hear from them in a little bit. Also, Yulia, um, you want to say thank you to our mentors and volunteers? Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> How do we know who is who? We will what? have someone on slides later, but actually way to do it, use Discord. Wave your hands on Discord, say, hey, I am a mentor. Hey, I am a sponsor. And we are having the sponsors booths on Discord. So please stop by, check with them. They have quite a lot of jobs available for you. Absolutely. Because while we're meeting here for Zoom for our um, main stage, Discord is where we'll be meeting in small groups, our project groups, um, our mentors are available there, uh, you know, help support is there as well. So a lot of things happening on Discord after the main stage closes. All right, and yeah, as Max put in the chat box, all links are available in the Discord, um, all neatly bundled together in the guide channel, in the guide channel on Discord. So Yulia, go ahead. Thank you. you want to say some something about the team? Cool. I have the best team ever. <laughs> the exciting one. Uh, please meet everyone. You learned about Andrea. She is the best. She is a driver. And I'm just decided we have to have it. That's why I'm the organizer, right? We have a good team of communication. Uh, managers. So they're helping us. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Jennifer. They are all working mostly on the Discord, communicating if you got stuck or if you need anything. And we have a help desk with Brandon and Max. Thank you, team. Thank you very much. Right. Awesome group. Awesome group. All right. And where to find organizers and questions. So once the main stage closes, the best place to go and look for everybody is Discord. And even now, if you um, have Discord up and running, you can go there, you can um, see any announcements, you can go to general and help, um, introduce yourself there, get your mentors there. So, you know, after we um, hear our pitches and everything, the whole event will move over to Discord. But right now, um, and Yulia just put the link to the URL for Discord in the chat. Thank you, Yulia. So that's where you'll find your organizers and you'll be able to ask questions in the help channel on Discord. All right. Next slide. Oh, oh. and next is me. I have to sell to say how cool Open Hub is. Okay, welcome, Open Hub. <laughs> Thank you, Open Hub, for doing making this all possible. You see how octopusy we are. This is the mind map, what we do. But actually, we do bring people together around technology. And we're excited to build meaningful connections. How do we do that? We are creating an environment where people learn and work together, benefiting and inspired by technology and collaboration. We do love matchmaking them for mutual empowerment. And of course, mentoring the youth and empowering professionals to share their, their best practices and grow as mentors. So you see, it's open, it's hub, and this is the way to grow. That's it. The next slide then. All right, I just always like to touch on our code of conduct. Um, this can be found on Open Hub or at the HV Tech Fest. Um, HV Tech Fest. HV Tech Fest .com code of conduct. Um, it's important that we are open to all ideas, all people, and we expect 
this to be an open, open respectful and inclusive community. Um, in short, I guess it is no jerky behavior. Uh, that's the way we, we, like to, we like to sum it up, but we're accepting to all people, all ideas, and um, it's an open forum where we're collaborating and creating together, all right? We have a question in the chat. How is this working? Are we being sorted into groups based on what we state? I was under the impression we would be going in with selected team and tackling a given challenge. You we will get there. We will get there. Yep. And, and actually, well, we can address that now, Yulia, real quick, if you want me to. Sure. Sure. Go ahead. I mean, I think we left it open ended so that if folks came with a team and they wanted to work on that, um, you know, they, they come in with an idea, they're going to pitch their idea. But if they want to work on that with people they come with, then that's okay. And if other people, um, if they want to join a different team, well, then that's okay too, right? And it's all relevant to best experience possible doing yeah. this first time virtual. Yeah. That's what this slide is about. Yeah, it's exactly, exactly. So here's our, here's our schedule. You, Julie um, got us going at one o'clock. Our kickoff and introduction to the problem is happening now. We are going to be doing a design thinking warm up from 2.30 to three. We'll talk- Almost there, almost there. <laughs> talking as fast as I can. Um, technology to use, social distancing, ed tech. I guess we're gonna get into that a bit from three to 3.30. Our pitches, somebody had asked about when we're starting that, 3.30 is when we're hoping to start our pitch fest forming teams from 3.30 to four, um, quick empathy mapping to help our teams get focused and think outside the box a bit about who they're, um, who they're really designing for. Um, some time to talk for our sponsors, EdTech from 4.30 to five if we need that time still, and then get hacking. So we will begin hacking around five um, and then you'll have from five until 1.45 on Saturday morning. So mentors will be in Discord on Saturday morning from 10 to one. Discord will be the main place where everything's happening from five o'clock tonight until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, we'll cease hacking at 1.45. Projects will be submitted at that point, no later than two o'clock. We'll introduce and welcome our judges at 2.15. Start demos and presentations at 2.30. And um, also while the judges are deliberating, We'll have some extra um, panel presentations happening during that time. People will be sharing what inspired them to get, in, um, get involved with technology and how this became um, their life on, on many levels, right? And so we'll hear from that. We'll hear possibly about some um, jobs and internships that are available. So great discussions during that time. And then our award ceremony will be around 4.30, okay. So these are our mentors. Julia, you want to introduce some of our mentors? We definitely will give them more a round of applause next um, tomorrow, Saturday. But you see like two groups and I'm really proud to address the left column. You see actually represent the business wing, entrepreneurial wing. So this is your gateway to your future startup and investments. If you would like to, uh, you will get to know Scott Jeffrey and Christoph, they're awesome. Take as much advantage as you can. And here's the right wing, which is all technology. Those are the best technology experts ever. I know I didn't list everyone. We have quite more mentors on Discord available. Worth to mention um, at least Mark Tortelot. And I, I know I forget people, but welcome to step up. Patrick maybe will be mentoring, maybe will be participating as a team player. I don't know. Take it from here. All right. Awesome. So we'll have um, the mentors available in Discord. There is a um, channel just for mentors there that you can, um, you know, kind of uh, ping people and see if they can meet with you and join you in one of your um, coding rooms. So um, not a business competition, an idea celebration, right? Hackathons, we're celebrating thinking, we're celebrating creation, we're celebrating building. Um, that's what it's about and solving problems. All right. So rules, I've already um, talked about our code of conduct. 
Um, one of the other things we have are no developed projects or pre-written code. Um, libraries and frameworks are allowed. Again, no trolling, inflammatory or destructive behavior. Be respectful in all of the spaces that we're using for the event. And sponsors are not eligible for prizes. Team members are, but um, you can still demo. Okay. So these are our judging criteria. We'll post the rubric later on, but basically 20% will go towards creativity. Oops. 20% of the judging will go ingenuity and creativity. Um, you have an idea that sounds crazy. Well, let's put it together and um, make it happen. Wow factor. So what's that wow factor? What's happening in your code? What's happening with your idea, your thinking that's really going to um, knock the judge's socks off? Execution, to what extent did your team successfully execute and complete your concept in the course of 24 hours? 20% um, on your demo. Quick, quick thing about the demo here, but I know we get into it later too. You can do your demo live or you can do your demo in a pre-recorded video. That's up to you. We'll, um, we'll uh, you know, consider bo both ways of, of doing the final presentations. And then lastly, um, is it a multidisciplinary project? Um, we encourage and applaud interdisciplinary projects, teams, um, always looking for different ways that hackathons bring, bring people together, um, looking at problems through diverse perspectives and unique lenses. All right, here's our judges, introducing them now, but more formally tomorrow, Leandra Tejedor. She's a co-founder of VidCode, a um, educational tool to teach programming and um, in JavaScript specifically, and Joe Cupano, who's a managing consultant. So welcome to both of them. Joe might be with us now, but we'll do a more formal introduction to both of them tomorrow. Prizes, Yulia, you want to talk about our prizes? Oh, no, <laughs> I want them all. You want them all? <laughs> so just a quick overview of our prizes. Grand prize, $500, also three hours mentoring session with VC and cloud or AI training. Um, we have runner up $300 in gift cards provided by ROI training. Social impact prize, $100 in gift cards. We also have a best ed tech hack. That's the theme, one of the theme, oh, I think that was Surprise. The the theme prize that we have, yep, five, $500 provided by Data Art. Thank you. In and cash? Then, yep, in cash. And then a best effort hack provided by Yandex Practicum, $2,000 value for a web dev boot camp, data analyst or data scientist boot camp, your choice. We also have a, a couple of raffles that we'll be running as we go throughout the event, the event as well. And t shirts. T shirts, I forgot about the t shirts. Yes, absolutely. Um, so when we get there, and this, this slide will absolutely be posted and available tomorrow, and all these links will be available tomorrow, I'm sure um, Max has already included them in Discord, so we'll know where to find them as well. Um, and you'll be able to submit your projects there a couple different ways if you're not, just in case you're not on dev post. All right. So project presentations, talked about this a, a minute ago. Presentations, you can record your presentation or present live three minutes. So you'll have a three minute um, window with which you can present your presentation. And um, the judges will have one minute to ask follow up questions. So when you submit your project, and again, we'll go through this tomorrow, include a link of your video if appropriate. Sign up will be posted to present. And um, in terms of the order, you'd like to either present or have your video um, shown for you. Project submissions on DevPost or Google Forms will not be accepted after, I think we're starting at 1.45 to accept. So they won't be accepted after two o'clock on Saturday. All right. So Discord, again, we've said that's where all the work will be happening. Voice communication, screen sharing, video communication for breakout rooms. We have hacker rooms, sponsor rooms, mentor rooms, all kinds of um, channels over on, our disc, over on the Discord. I'm looking at it now. We have um, a help channel, general announcements. Um, so lots of activity going on over there. And that will be the place to go to, um, you know, find help, get questions answered after five o'clock today. Um, the link is there. 
Uh, you can find our website on the nav bar, hvtechfest.com. And you can also use the link to join. You, you, can you just, um, I know it's still, oh, it's still in the chat box. So yep, the link to join the Discord is still in the chat box. Awesome. Um, Max, do you want to say anything about Discord and what people can expect there? I think he's on. Yes, he is. Um, well, it's a very useful tool that people, I expect people will want to use to coordinate with each other once the teams are formed. Um, also, we will be sharing all sorts of relevant information using the guide channel and announcements channel. As a matter of fact, as we are continuing through this uh, event, uh, we will be posting uh, the stage that we're on in announcements to make sure everyone is aware where we're, where we are at. And uh, it's also, there will be coding rooms that people can use uh, to coordinate with each other if they want to. Um, more channels can be made if people need them. Yep. Uh, it's not, it's, it's not only text, right? It's video, voice yeah, connected. There, 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 there's voice, there's text. You can use it for screen sharing. Um, share snippets of code between each other, ask for help from mentors. Uh, if you have really any questions about how to use Discord, you can always uh, ask me. So saying that this is a new use case for Discord, it never was used for <laughs> sponsors booths or for networking, like mentoring, I guess. So we're just inventing the wheel. Yep, absolutely. Hey, it's the age of innovation, right, uh, in COVID. So, um, Max, we do have a question in the chat. Um, can you recommend a cheat sheet people can have if they need it for Discord? I don't know if you have anything like that handy, but if you do, could you just- It's in the Discord. <laughs> it's already published. <laughs> awesome, awesome. There you go, guide. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Mila, for, for posting that too. All right, fabulous. So Mark, there's, there you go. Um, so where can you find HB Tech Fest? If you can find HB Tech Fest on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you are tweeting about the event, um, we ask that you uh, mention us and you know include our handle and also the hashtag. Thank you. OK. So sponsors time. Yeah. Are you ready? Do we have sponsors in the room? Let's see. The sponsors can unmute themselves if they're here. Let's do, let's start with data art. Do you have anyone hey guys. from data art? Woo. Yeah, Alex here with a nice background. Nice to see and hear you all. And I'm Alex from data art. I'm basically leading the educational technology wing we have here. And I'm excited to be here and see that many bright minds and people aiming to actually innovate. I love the vibe of hackathons. I still consider myself a bit of a software engineer, so um, uh, great to be here. So a few words about Data. Data is a global engineering firm with a uniquely human approach. Uh, we're global. We're like 3,600 people. Most of them are related to innovation in this or that way. So software engineers, product and project managers, uh, and all this sort of crowd. So we help our clients to build new technology or update the technology in fields like finance, travel and hospitality, media and entertainment, um, healthcare and life sciences, and finally digital transformation, which has seen a lot of a movement within educational technology with this, um, with this COVID thing, right? So I'm making a seg now to what I'm doing. So as I'm leading the ad tech, um, I've seen a lot of trends and I look forward to you know, your solutions and your innovations here and your hacks is looks like the industry or sphere of life looks seems like is waiting to be disrupted right so we started with this um entire education push to remote right which worked out well for a short term but then we're seeing that we got the base components like zoom we have now but we're still lacking in more advanced stuff like methodics advanced communication and so on and so forth so there's a lot of disruption to happen in the industry i think um, the sort of new way we are now educating and learning, it demands for new modalities. So like I've, I've been seeing people begging for something to have for VR and IR, especially in the uh, um, uh, like vocational training where you need to have hands-on experience with something like engineering. So there is a need for immersive technologies. Um, 
Um, the funny thing that the the general initial expectation was the technology would make uh, everyone more equal, right? Would equalize people's opportunities. It turned out that it's not always the case. So in addition to having a good bandwidth and device and whatever, kids, if we're talking specifically about K-12, they need to have basic things, very basic things like a calm room to study and free time. And that's not available to everyone, unfortunately. So there is a lot of things to do in there, right? And uh, the bigger trend which started before the COVID is the move from the um, like institution orientation, like centering on curriculum or the degree or the college or university, instead centering on the students' needs and things like lifelong learning and how they evolve and how they get micro degrees and how they actually consume different bits and pieces, not just the university learning, but also MOOCs and whatever online resources are available and so on and so forth. And from the standpoint of the employer, believe me, like that's, it's the same. So like it's, you are a combination of what you've learned from whatever sources you got from. So there is a lot of stuff to do in this area. And uh, I actually look forward to you innovating something on this one. So uh, a few things to note, to, to mention or more formal ones. So uh, Yulia already mentioned we got the nomination for the best ad tech project here, and I look forward to seeing the, uh, the competition. Um, uh, there is also an announcement. So we are currently running a joint project, a mix of research and development between data and institution, educational institutions, colleges, which is aimed at building the machine learning model for predicting the students' disengagement at early stages. So not at the final exam when everyone is off, but before, so that the uh, teaching staff can actually take preemptive measures. So I'll be reaching out to educational partners here after the event when, when the dust is settled and uh, talking about that. And the final one, probably, I won't take much of your time. Uh, at 4.30 today, I got my colleague, Marina Lemlech. She's going to talk a bit more about a wider view of data with the data it sees through our clients and through our industries on how things are going in relation to these COVID changes and everything. Uh, with this one, I'd like to say good luck. It's it's amazing. I still remember my times doing the same and I, I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, the call to sponsors actually to keep it very short, Alex. Um, provided the gold sponsorship and the special prize, which is educational tech prize. So that's why he has to in explain why we why it is so important. Educational tech matter. It's quite a big challenge for social distancing, for sure. Okay, saying that, we do have the next sponsor. And Mike, keep it short and sweet, please. Unmute yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Friday. My name is Mike Wagner. I'm a business operations officer at Technically Creative. Our office is right on 9W in New Windsor, where we design elite technology services for enterprise level financial firms, specializing in compliance, electronic communication, and the surveillance process. In short, we ensure the multinational investment banks that we work with are conducting themselves not only legally, but also ethically. Our brilliant, and I mean brilliant, Technicians and developers create custom and highly fine-tuned software to surveil and flag any electronic communication. I'm talking about emails, Skype messages, WhatsApp messages, WeChat. I believe we have the capability to monitor over 200 forms of text communication alone. We also look at web history or trade activity. The timing of the trades can be particularly important, especially when identifying insider trading. There are compliance and practice standards required to be in place by the federal government. If these firms do not meet or exceed the standard, they can be subjected to tens of millions of dollars in fines, not to mention the PR nightmare that follows. Let me humanize all this for a little. If you had money invested with a bank, would you want the individuals who manage your money placing risky bets against your wishes for their own personal monetary benefit? No. If you found out your account was half of what it should be because you had been defrauded by a few bad actors, how would you feel? Our, our solutions shine a light on the nefarious actions conducted in darkness, protecting the individual investors like you or myself. I do wanna take a second to let everyone know we are actively pursuing another Java developer. If you are an innovative Java, if you are an innovative Java developer and interested in joining the technically creative family, I encourage you to submit your resume to 
get info at technicallycreative.com or even email me directly at mwagner at technicallycreative.com. And before I close, I do want to express the gratitude that not only I, but also the Technically Creative staff as a whole have for what the Open Hub project and Yuli in particular is doing. It's been a difficult year for everyone and to put on another great event is truly an impressive accomplishment. Thank you for all your amazing efforts and I'm excited to see what this year's Hudson Valley Tech Fest brings. Thank you. Thank you for supporting it. Do we have anyone from Mediacom? Mediacom is hiring. And actually, we will use Discord for recruiting experience, interactive ex recruiting experience, and we will be publishing all jobs you have in their booths and into the specific channels. If we do have anyone from Mediacom, please unmute yourself. Have one minute. Yes, no? I don't see anybody from Mediacom here, Yulia. Okay, so it's saying that it saves us one minute and I will be posting the jobs because they submitted a lot of jobs. Yeah, cool. And then Ethan Allen, there is someone from Ethan Allen here. Absolutely, Ryan. Hello, my name is Ryan Snyder. I do IT recruitment within Ethan Allen Workforce Solutions. We are a recruitment mm -hmm. firm within the Hudson Valley. Our main office is in Poughkeepsie with satellite offices in Fishkill, Kingston, and Middletown. We started recruitment services 50 years ago. And since then, we started doing staffing as well as PEO benefit and RPO services. Over the course of those 50 years, we've been implementing those slowly. So we see ourselves as a one-stop shop. And in terms of the types of positions that we recruit for and staff for, we go across the board and outside of IT, we do industrial, administrative, marketing, uh, the whole gamut. So uh, those who are interested in learning about new opportunities, feel free to visit our website at eaworkforce.com. For those within IT specifically, my email address is ryan at eaworkforce.com. And one of the big jobs I'm looking for right now is a BI analyst in Kingston. Someone just has good data visualization understanding within Tableau, scripting between R and Python, and also an understanding of data warehouse schemas, such as Star and Snowflake. But uh, I would like to thank Yulia for putting on a, another great year for the Hudson Valley Tech Festival and look forward to the talent out there this year. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. And thank you all sponsors again. Actually, we have more community support as well. So check the website, check DevPost. Uh, it will actually keep coming, keeps coming. Saying that, do we have any questions? If so, let's save time and submit them into the Discord chat. That's where the all activity will be happening. We will be having job posts there. Please exchange your emails. Please just network as much as you can and hack. And also tomorrow during the time that the judges are deliberating, we'll have speakers talking about skilling up and jobs that are available then. So before we jump into our first activity of design thinking and get everybody prepared for their pitches, um, I just want to uh, share some information about why HV Tech Fest Hackathon and why social distancing and the digital divide. Um, can you go to the next slide, Yulia? So we're living in a new normal. Um, a lot of people are calling that the new normal. Uh, I've been referring to it, uh, I've seen some articles McKinsey wrote about the next normal and um, what can I do now? Um, the theme for the, uh, the umbrella theme for this year's Hudson Valley Tech Fest is social distancing and the digital divide. Um, social distancing that, recur that occurred in response to the pandemic uh, as of March 13th, I think that's the day that everything shut down. Um, and it's become a huge challenge for everyone. We miss our friends. We can't freely travel. Um, we've been pushed into working in remote environments that, we, that took us by surprise. Um, Yulia produced several different podcasts where um, she had representatives from many different industries start to talk about what it meant to pivot during this time. Small businesses lost clients. Brick and mortar businesses had to close their doors. Social distancing at school for those, for those schools that have reopened has become uh, a challenge. 
And, um, you know, research is showing us that children are having trouble focusing. There's a lot of sensory issues with kids and just this overall sense of social um, isolation. The ability to work and learn remotely has limited, has been limited not only by um, the change in our work environments, but also by the digital divide that has sort of been revealed even more so by the pandemic. So not just um, lack of devices or lack of broadband, but also lack of skills. How do we navigate this new environment that we're living in? So in terms of our digital, digital divide, those three factors have come to light now more than ever. I think we always knew they were there. Um, myself as an educator, it's something that I've been working with for quite a long time and been immersed in the ed tech world for a long time. But I think it's really um, hit our workforce really hard now. Um, the unemployment rate has tripled since the shutdown. The level of anxiety and depression in society is causing um, an increase in emotional and mental um, health issues. We've seen the need for those services increase dramatically. And there is an urgent need for rapid tech development for local businesses and individuals to help overcome the issues that have come to surface as a result of, of what we're doing. Um, you know, we've, I touched on the digital divide, but where we are today is a time where we have to demonstrate resolve, resilience, um, and a reimagination. You know, these shifts and their impact on how we live, how we work, how we use technology are emerging more clearly. And it's time to reinvent ourselves, our, our industries, or our thinking in how we persevere and solve problems. And that's what we're here for today, really looking at these issues, um, social, social distancing and uh, the digital divide and what um, problems we've faced as a result of it and possible solutions that we feel it's important to develop to help ourselves and other people to overcome these issues and obstacles. So with that, um, that's our theme, but how do we solve these problems? And design thinking is one way that really lets us um, jump in and um, tackle issues that we see and problems that we see. So Tyler King and Karina Campos um, have joined us and we're gonna let them take over for a few minutes here and engage us in some design thinking activities and, and talk about the structures that design thinks, thinking allows us um, in terms of problem solving. Perfect, I'm gonna steal the screen from you or I think you have to give it to me. <laughs> ah, okay. So first of all, I stop sharing. Check if you can do it right now. Yep, I can, hello. Beautiful, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Right on. So you've heard a lot of talking this morning. You're probably, or I don't, I don't even know what time of day it is. I don't know when I am anymore. You've heard a lot of talking at some point in your life today. Um, it's time to start actually doing some stuff. Um, so I'm joined here with Karina Campos, and we're going to talk a little bit about design thinking. It's a skill that's really important to have, especially in the tech industry, but no matter where you are, um, we're going to teach you a little bit about it and we're going to let you guys do kind of a warm up exercise to start actually getting your brains moving. Um, mm -hmm. So we're here from IBM. My name is Tyler King. I'm the design lead for IBM Z Resiliency um, and I'm here with Karina. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Nice to be here with everyone. Um, I'm Karina Campos. I'm the design lead for IBM Z AI and Analytics. Perfect. And I'm going to pre-apologize there. You might hear my dog bark. He's outside. He's very excited that the day is nice. So here's a dog tax just in case. Here you go. Here's a mental picture. He's very cute. Um, so I said we're going to talk about design thinking. It's something that, you know, in the professional world, especially if you're getting a job in tech, you'll hear a lot about. And it's just like sometimes people are like, what is this random buzzword that people talk about all the time? Um, we're going to tell you about it. So 
Karina and I are both designers at IBM. And when I joined IBM, I thought that design was just about making things look nice. It was just about making things pretty. Um, but when I was hired by IBM, I found out very quickly that I was wrong. Um, design really isn't just about making things pretty. It's not about making things look nice. I can't design pretty things for to save my life. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't have a job if, if that was what design was. Um, but really simply put, design is a focus on people. Um, when we're building products and offerings and solutions and doing things in hackathons, we are trying to solve problems and they're solving problems that are, you know, there's people at the center of those problems because we're trying to give products to somebody and those products are designed to help people and make people's lives better. So design is really focusing on the people at the center of every problem. Um, and design is a way to solve problems with a focus on humans. It's literally just human-centered problem solving, designing with empathy and focusing on the people who are gonna use our products. And design thinking, especially, is a process. You know, the best way to go in and tackle a problem or to tackle, you know, doing any type of activity or, you know, uh, challenge is to really put some structure around it. So design and design thinking are the structure and the framework that we put around how we approach problems at IBM. And so, you know, it sounds like a really abstract process. Um, but design thinking and especially design thinking at IBM are super easy. It's super chill. Um, it's easy to remember at IBM. We just have three steps to doing design thinking and we do them in an infinity loop. We just continue iterating through these steps. So the three steps to design thinking, all you have to remember from what we say today is observe, reflect, and make. So you observe the world around you. Um, you're doing this every single day without even noticing it. You're noticing you know, how people are interacting. You're noticing how uh, people are driving or how people are responding to the pandemic. Um, and then you reflect on what you've observed. So you reflect with your team, you get aligned, uh, make sense of what you've learned. And then you go and make something. You make a goal statement or a problem statement or a prototype or the actual product. And then you go and reflect on how that product is being used and you observe how your customers are interacting with that product. So again, three steps, super easy, observe, reflect, and make. And so today we're gonna focus on, you know, kind of a problem statement um, that should be near and dear to your heart. Your heart. And you've already done the observation because we're gonna be focusing in today on, you know, people during the pandemic. So uh, we're gonna do some exercises where you can reflect, get together with your team and then go and make something. Um, but really users are going to be at the center of everything, especially during this hackathon today, you're solving real problems for real people and just acknowledge that humans are the people who are going to be using your, your thing, whatever you're making, you're solving someone's problem. So I'll pass it off to Karina to tell you what's going on. Yeah. Thanks Tyler. So uh, the first point that we definitely want to make is that design is not just for designers and it's also not a workshop. Um, a workshop is a way to kind of generate ideas to progress the design process. Uh, but you know, at IBM design thinking and our frameworks are for everyone. And it's a common language to help people align around, you know, what products are we gonna design for the people that purchase them and the people that use them. Um, so next slide, Tyler. Um, the first thing you have to acknowledge is that you're not your user, right? You're not designing for yourself, you're designing for someone else. And so it's important to acknowledge that. And it's actually better that you don't have any context into someone else's kind of life or what their kind of problems are because you're allowed to, you're better able to see, you know, the bigger picture and understand the context of, you know, this particular person's, you know, scenario or life. Um, so always remember that you're not your user, never assume about anything. Um, so along this lines, you know, it's also important to go and find users, right? You need to actually talk to them. You need to engage with them, understand, um, build empathy, ask them questions about their day, how they're going about, uh, you know, kind of living their lives during this pandemic. You know, how have, you know, your parents or your grandparents or your brother and sister's lives changed in this pandemic? Because everyone brings a 
fresh and different perspective. Um, and so with that, you know, it's important to build empathy and try to understand it, put yourself in your user shoes, whoever you're attempting to design for, you know, there's nothing worse than feeling, you know, I've, I've done all this work and no one wants to use my product, right? You want your, you know, innovations to actually influence people and, you know, make sure that you're delivering something they need. So build empathy for them and definitely talk to them. So as Tyler mentioned, you know, all our lives have changed significantly during the pandemic. Um, and you're very familiar with your kind of own situations, how your personal life has changed. But we wanna challenge you to think a little bit outside of that. We want you to think about your parent or guardian, your aunt, your uncle, you know, anyone kind of in your life um, and try to understand the pandemic from their perspective. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna use an IBM design thinking framework called an empathy map. And so an empathy map is a really simple quadrant um, and you put like the little user in the middle um, and it basically divides, um, kind of distills the person into four kind of characteristics. You know, what does this person say during the pandemic? You know, someone might say like, oh my gosh, I've been stuck inside my house all day or there's no yeast at the grocery store for me to make bread. <laughs> um, you know, what are they thinking? You know, they're thinking, am I gonna get COVID if I go into the grocery store? Can I see my grandparents, you know? Uh, am I allowed to like hug my mom, right? Um, what are they feeling? You know, they're probably feeling anxiety or maybe they're feeling excited because they love to be inside all the time and this is just the greatest thing to happen to them. And what are they doing, right? Some people maybe are reading more, listening to podcasts, maybe engaging in new activities. Um, and so we've created a little framework to help you guys out um, and exercise these skills. So you're actually gonna be put into teams and you're gonna create an empathy map. And I believe Andrea has set that all up for you guys. Um, and so you're gonna make an empathy map for a parent or guardian, an adult person in your life uh, during the pandemic. So think about how their life has maybe changed. Um, what do they have to take care? What do they have to do to take care of you now, right? Or what do they have to do to take care of, you know, the larger family or their loved ones? How are they feeling? You know, how are they feeling, you know, spending more time inside and maybe having to shift around work? Um, and, you know, think about what they might think about on a daily basis. Um, so this empathy map um, will be in a Google Doc. You'll be able to copy and paste it and type in, you know, all of these kind of thoughts that your parents and guardians and kind of loved ones may have. Um, so I think the next slide, Tyler. Um, so you're gonna join your warm-up team and you're gonna actually do this exercise. Uh, you'll copy the new template, you'll copy a template um, into a new Google Doc. And with your team, everyone just kind of throw your ideas into all these quadrants. What you're doing is you are combining all those uh, thoughts around says, thinks, does, and feels, and you're actually creating something that we call a persona, which is a collage of many perspectives kind of smushed into one, and it allows you to create a summary of a person, right? A person, an adult person kind of going and experiencing COVID is what you're aiming for. Uh, so you're going to complete your uh, team's empathy map, and then what you're going to do is identify, you know, what were the most painful parts um, that this person is experiencing? What are they doing that's really challenging? What are they, you know, how is their kind of emotional and mental state? You know, are they really struggling? Are they feeling anxious? That's a, a pain point, something that this person is struggling with. And you're going to use that as a basis to kind of think about how you could potentially solve that pain point. You know, how can we make someone less anxious? How can we make someone more excited to engage um, you know, in working from their home environment. Um, so I'll kind of stop there. Um, that is, you know, kind of a summary of what you guys are going to be completing and doing. Tyler, did I miss anything? No. Um, so just remember, this is going to be, you know, put your experience with your own parent or guardian in here. It's not going to line up exactly with, you know, your teammates and that's fine. We want to see where there's commonalities. We want to see where there's differences so we can get a good view of that quote unquote persona um, and keep an eye on the time. So you got 10 minutes for each exercise. So assign a timekeeper for your group so that we're back here in the Zoom or wherever we have to go next uh, as close to on time as possible. And if you end up really enjoying doing this empathy map or you want to 
earn a free kind of credential that can go on your LinkedIn or in your pro your resume somewhere. Uh, here's a, a link. I'll post it in the chat to um, to earn a free digital badge. Uh, it's like real. It's recognized across the industry. Uh, it's design mm -hmm. thinking. Yay. Yeah, definitely. Andrea, chat. The first link to the chat. So, um, yeah, Yulia. So, what I'm going to do first is is share a link to the document. And when you when I sh after I share the link and you go there, please make a copy of it. Don't start typing in that document um, because uh, it's it's open for everybody to edit. So just make a copy of it before you start writing in it. So that's the first thing. Um, and also, we're going to give you two minutes to start thinking on your own to sort of what is this persona that has um, that you're designing for or that has um, you know uh, that you're you're combining all your parents guardians into one collage of a person so start your idea first so that when you arrive in the team with your breakout group um, you you have that idea so that persona already started so I'm going to share the link now to the document there it is it's in the chat and take two minutes and um, during that time, I'm going to set up breakout groups and you'll be and then and then you'll be with your breakout group and you can create that collage of the person. And one of you can just create that collage right in your document. All right. You can just create it right there and then we'll come back and hopefully some of you will be able to share about that experience and who you're designing for. I'm sure um, we, we all want to hear that. So, Yulia, as a co-host, I'm not able to put folks into breakout groups. Um, if you can do that, that would be great. Or else you can um, shift those responsibilities to me, whatever you'd like. Uh, let me try to do these breakout rooms myself. So how many breakout rooms do we want? We are with 50 people. So let's say we do want 10 rooms. Do we? Perfect. Okay. randomly oh, assigned room. cool i'll see some of you in room four right. awesome So it might be boring activity for live stream then, but it is okay. Well, they'll be back here before we know it. So we've got 10 minutes. So maybe 3.15, I'll bring everybody, we can bring everybody back, Yulia? Yes, we can close all rooms whenever is needed. You yeah, just give me a heads up. All right, I'm, I'm saying I'm thinking 3.15-ish. 315 ish. Let's see. Let's see how things go. I'll pop into um, breakout room five and see how it's going in a little bit. Me too. So um, it looks like we don't have. It looks like we don't um, have. I just I'm just checking our schedule real quick. I just want to um, check in with you. It, I don't think we're going to have. Um, teams um where it says technology to you social distancing ed tech three to three thirty we're not going to have that right do i need to do something andrea no no i'm just i'm just checking to see uh, if i look at the schedule i don't think we're going to have anybody um, in that we're not doing that, right? We, I mean, we sort of have already done it, right? The technology to use social distancing ed tech from three to three thirty. Checking it right now. Okay. Yes, we're good. We have four thirty only. We can take this time. Great, fantastic. So we'll, we'll, we're still on time to start the pitch fest right around three thirty then. Woohoo! Yay! Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, cool. I'm gonna take a quick break and uh, be back. Can I join the room three with my teammate? Are you able to switch? Yulia, are you able to switch um, a person from one, from one room to another?
Hey, Lou, you want to bring everybody back? It looks like it's time to bring everybody back. Exactly. Excellent. Hey, Patricia. <laughs> it was too short, probably. People just started to realize what they expected to do and why. And actually, I believe some people didn't get, they have to bring their own, to pitch their own ideas. If they don't have idea, it's worth to listen what people have to say, right? Oh, absolutely. And That's join the teams. It. Yes. Okay. That was some rapid fire empathy mapping. <laughs> it was too rapid, too far, <laughs> too short. <laughs> right, that's the idea, right? Get everybody thinking. <laughs> They'll get to do it again for their, their real project. So exactly. I'm not worried. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to remind everybody, because we're going to debrief on this, but also if you um, do want to pitch, here's the link um, to the form to pitch too. I know some people have indicated um, a desire to do so, but anyway, I just want to put that in the chat before we jump into our empathy map. So Tyler, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Wait, what's happening? What? <laughs> I thought they were done with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to see what they created, right? If anybody wants to share the empathy oh. map that they created or okay. talk about it or their persona or how they came to an agreement about who they were designing for. Yeah, and if you guys are a little shy, feel free to type it out in the chat how you felt about the experience um, and you know how you kind of entered that headspace of that person. I believe it's very tied to the fact what your pitch is, what's your passion about. Some people were expo expressing the fact they were expecting to be given the challenge, but their challenge is umbrella challenge. So you have to find your inner fire, your inner passion, and to find the specific issue you want to address during the hackathon. I think that, yeah, I think that Nicholas wants to share. So I think you have the power to unmute yourself, maybe. Yes, they are. Okay, so in my group, uh, we sort of collaborated together um, and we decided that for uh, the empathy map, we chose just my mom. Uh, her name is Elizabeth. And uh, the picture of what they look like, I put in a picture of Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus. Yes. Um, and my mom, she's a, a public school science. She's a science teacher in uh, New York City for a public school and um, she's been a teacher there for like 18 years. And so she's near the end of her career there. And um, one, this school year is very difficult for her because she's more old school, no pun intended. Um, and so I, we just kind of came up with um, four, I guess prompts about how my mom as a uh, uh, older teacher is uh, doing and says, I know she says that she, 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 she's not the most tech uh, illiterate. And so a lot of times she'll like accidentally uh, delete something. And so for says, I, I said, uh, she, she will say, I need to redo this from the bottom up because um, sometimes she she deletes things and has to relearn how to do something. Uh, thinks she she's thinking about how long uh, how long this this can continue and how the uh, students are effectively learning. Um, does kind of contradictory for does but she she's she does more um at home whereas previously she never really did and it, it's kind of making her uh antsy i guess she's more uh more anxious and for feels i put confused a lot of the times she there 
the leadership in her school, they will change their, their mind about one thing. And um, it seems a little arbitrary and that's confusing for her. And uh, that was my empathy map that we came up with uh, together. Yay, that's great. Um, it looks like we might have some other folks that want to do a quick share too. Um, yes, please, or... Cesar Bell, Caesar Bell. Caesar? I see. Mm -hmm. If you want to share, Caesar, I also see Noah's there and Taylor, you're on. I don't know if you want to share. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I can go first. That's fine. Go ahead. Great. Um, so in our, in our breakout group, we, we kind of did it independently, um, but we had help by Karina to point us in the right direction. So, so kudos Karina on that. Thank you. Um, so I did uh, a mom uh, and her, I named her Susan. Uh, I kind of used like an avatar image process. Um, I guess I can, I can share my screen too, if you want, if that helps. Sure. Uh, cool. So here goes Susan. Um, <laughs> so for some of the says, I did. Uh, I need to find ways to help my kid with his homework. Uh, I need to increase my home network. Uh, I need to learn math myself as I haven't taken math in a long time. Uh, and can I prevent uh, my child from being distracted from watching Netflix or playing video games? Um, for some of the things I put, I'm going to be able, uh, am I going to be able to homeschool my child while maintain, maintaining a full-time job? Uh, will I be able to afford this increased bill? Can I find books to help with math or resources to help me understand the latest math strategies? For some of the does, uh, with the limited time, I was able to only jot down one, uh, and that's picking up some more hours to afford to increase the internet bill. And then for the fills, refuse to send my kids to school uh, as I don't want my child getting COVID-19. Um, so that's where I kind of left off with my empty net. That's great, thank you. And very, very, very real problems. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Thank Let's you. see, um, Taylor, did you wanna add anything? I see you. Um... Um, that, was, that was really good. Um, I, uh, our group, we, we were discussing like a lot of conceptual things. We didn't get to fully flesh out um, a persona in that time, but we were discussing the persona um, of a person who is older and, and tends to um, struggle more with computer literacy. And something that Mark, who is in our group, actually helped us uh, was in reframing the discussion from what is this person unable to do to what is this person able to do? So perhaps this person has really good handwriting and, and they can find information in books and they have um, a greater capacity for focusing than maybe younger people do who grew up in a technology environment. So that was um, some of what we were able to cover in that time, as well as some design fundamentals that uh, Mark was describing. All right, awesome. And one more, Noah, do you wanna share? I know Patrick is advocating for you to share. So uh, I don't know if that's something you wanna do or not. Um, so our group didn't have like the most amount of time. So I was pretty much the only one that was able to say the empathy map. So our persona was um, our mom. And we didn't like, so my mom's name is Young. So some some stuff she would say to me would like, oh, we need to get better Wi-Fi so you don't have trouble in class or like lag. And then like, she would also say, you need to, you need to be healthy and try to stay away from others. So like you keep our family safe and yourself. Uh, uh, she thought like, what are uh, what are some possible solutions if someone got COVID? What would we do? Um, something she would do was buy uh, she bought a new internet plan which contained better connection for me and my mom since she's a teacher, and um, she also didn't allow me to meet other people that we didn't know very well that I may have not may have known but like my parents didn't know, and then she felt like. She was scared that if I went outside or went to school, 
I, what would we do if I got COVID? Um, she also felt like the plans that the school gave us for the hybrid was not very like efficient. And what is it that we may not get as much education as we usually would by going to normal school. All right, awesome. Thank you for sharing. And um, um, Frangelina indicated in the chat box that she would like to share too. Frangelina, you wanna come on? Sure, hello. Hello. So uh, I didn't know we were like, we had a, a specific time to do it, but I filled out the empathy map as fast as I could. Uh, my persona is a mother. Her name is Celine Marino and she's a mother of two. Uh, seven years and nine years old. She's bilingual, but English is her second language. Um, she's a single parent currently working a full-time job to provide for her family. So because of COVID-19 and the, you know, virtual learning from home, kids, when they were going to school, you had uh, the option of like leaving your child for after school. And then after school, you get additional help with your homework. Um, or you do extracurricular activities. So kind of coronavirus kind of like took that away. So some of the problems that I put that she says is, I need to find a way to help my children with the homework. After school used to do this for me. And what she's thinking is, how am I going to find the time to do that? Um, so what she does is she stays up late at night to assist her children uh, the best that she can, but she feels afraid that the late nights will affect her children's sleeping pattern and uh, their attention span is going to affect them, you know, during the day's virtual learning. Um, so basically, uh, the idea was to create some sort of platform that it provides an after school hour assistance when it comes to helping with homework, uh, prepping for exams and those kinds of things that's geared more towards that and not specifically towards like tutoring. Awesome. Thank that was so good. Yes, that was great. That was fantastic. Thank yeah. you. You guys, you guys all killed it. You did amazing empathy maps. Um, the reason we wanted to do this was because, you know, you guys are going to be solving problems for, for real people during the hackathon. And Julie did a really great presentation about, you know, being introspective and thinking about like who you are as a learner and who you are as like an innovator or, you know, a boss or whatever. Now we wanted to, you know, flip that on its head and have you think about other people and how your actions are impacting others so that during this hackathon, you are hacking and making with purpose and really thinking, you know, really building empathy for the people whose lives you're hopefully making better through, through whatever you end up making. So we hope this was helpful. We're going to facilitate another empathy map once you start hacking. Um, so you can do it again. How exciting. <laughs> I'll pass it off to Andrea. Go take it away. All right. Thank you, Tyler. Um, Karina, thank you so much for setting up that first activity. And I think that was just um, to make that connection between what Julie's doing and thinking about who we're designing and building and creating for. And once we get into our teams, we'll revisit that again. So I, I, I can't wait to see where it all goes. So Yulia, I think we are ready to organize pitches. What do you think? Absolutely. So um, I think I need a minute just to make sure we have that um, list. Do you have the list of pitches? I guess we do need a minute, that's for sure. Okay. Preparation minute. So it's 3.28 now. Why don't we take a two minute break? Oh, it's 3.29, it just switched. Why don't we come <laughs> back at um, in two minutes, 3.31, and then mm -hmm. we'll have the order for pitching up and um, we'll be ready to go. What do you think? Absolutely. All right, so and give us two minutes to get ready. Yes, and meanwhile, I will bring this <clears throat> to the screen. Yep, perfect. Two minutes break. Yep, so 3.31, we'll start, we'll get ready for pitching. Cool.
my fault. Andrea, that's what you want to see on the screen, I the list so. of submissions. Do we? And we just want to call people from there to um, submit? All right, or to pitch rather? Okay, cool. That's exactly what we'll do. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. Then I have that, so I don't even know if we need to show it. Um, we don't, so let, let us see if we do have Arna here. And if we do, Arna, please unmute yourself. I have to say a couple of words about her. This is a very special girl. <laughs> and she's 11 years old. And she is always first submitting, hacking, doing amazing work. She's so shy. But she is the best. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So it is um, our two minutes are passed. We're at 332. So let's see. Mm -hmm. We can um, start the pitches. Let's see, I'm um, just gonna get my timer here. And so I think what we're going to do, we have the list of pitches um, of, of submissions that people submitted to pitch. And what we are going to do is listen to the pitches and then we're going to go, I'll have the title of the pitches on a- um, On the wall. <laughs> interactive, on an interactive uh, digital, bulletin board and people can go and sign up there and then we'll form teams based on that okay so, um, i'm just going to read down this list and invite people to pitch that are there all right so, i see 19 ideas right mm -hmm. yep that's what i saw too awesome mm -hmm. one by one we will just ask you to unmute yourself and just if we do have arna here arna patel arna if you're here raise your hand we will give you the stage. I see Arna here. I'm here. Okay, awesome! Yay! So, do you wanna do you wanna pitch? Sure. Okay. Uh, you, wait, just well, a second. Thank you, yeah, for the comments. Yep. Um, Yulia, do you wanna stop sharing, and then we can just call people? Or yeah, there we go. This way we can. This way we can see Arna. Perfect. 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 All right. Um, Arna, you ready? Yes. All right, I'm gonna start this and you can um, pitch your idea, go ahead. Um, my idea is to make a website for um, people who don't have technology or like, internet and teach them how to use it and have like um, resources where they can learn new technology and have internet resources and places where they can go which are safe in this situation. Anything else? Who do you need to help you develop the project? Um, I would like like a cloud engineer and like a API. Okay, awesome. Okay, thank you. Great. Great pitch. 60 seconds. Yep, she's, she's straight under. to the point. Yeah, she is the hacker. She is the one. <laughs> All right, awesome. Um, Yulia, do you have the list in front of you? Do you want to go down it and call people? or do I Yes. Oh. Arlo Weston. Arlo Weston, if I'm saying the name right. Yep, that, that's right. Um, so I could do this real quick. So, uh, I've got kids, and when they started up school this year, uh, with COVID, like everybody else, um, being at home, um, we had to actually go back to school at the beginning of this year and pick up textbooks and stuff. You just ask yourself, if 
you know, if we live in a digital world, why couldn't those textbooks, those big, heavy textbooks, just be used them digitally? Um, and um, I feel like there's still a lot of benefits we can give to uh, digital media. And uh, specifically, I can a PDF um, that, uh, that, we could, that we could improve on to make it to use some benefits um, that we have available uh, uh, technology. So for instance, like even just using a link and taking notes on a PDF to use a link to get different spots of the PDF to open up multiple versions of the PDF at the same time. Um, I took a, a class once and I had a textbook that was a PDF and there's a number of frust frustrating things about it. So I wanted to design an app or actually a, like a desktop where, that would help you manage your PDFs for different classes, maybe put them in different groups and, and then also help you manage notes and links to get to those. Um, I would think, so I'm a programmer. Um, I think I'll probably do it in, uh, in uh, an electron app. So um, I need uh, maybe a UI designer, a testers, uh, maybe even a project manager. If somebody else knows CSS, uh, they, they could also help out. Um, even a uh, developer, if they wanted to, if they knew HTML, CSS, Node, J, uh, or JavaScript. All right, Arlo, thank you. Awesome. So let's see, who's next? I see Christine Rolando. Christine Rolando. I hope I am saying the name right. Oh, the name's right. <laughs> Christine, are you here? Please unmute yourself. Give a pitch. She was submitting something about virtual concert. Sounds amazing. I don't see her here, Yulia. Okay, so shall I read it out loud? Or you know what? Let's go to the next person, mm -hmm. and then we'll circle back for anybody that wasn't able to that didn't show up initially. So I see the next person, Lydia Lambert, who indicated she doesn't have an idea, but she is looking for teammates, and she is a beginner in DC bosses, so mostly Linux and iOS. So Lydia, do you want to read? Or are you looking to join a team late after you hear everything? She's here. Yep, Lydia's here. Great. Unmute yourself. Um, I ended up coming up with a pitch today with my teacher in BOCES. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're all ears. Go ahead. Um, so I want to develop an app to help students stay organized and like so since they're all struggling with everything during COVID they're going to need a new organization system to help them set deadlines and stay on track and since a bunch of them are struggling with doing their work I want to um, make a built-in tutor into the app so they can access that throughout the day to get help when they can't uh, reach their teachers. That's awesome. Awesome. All right, we're done. Okay, so the next is Gerard Vindias. Correct me if I'm <laughs> bad with names. I know I might. Jared. Gerard Vindias. I don't see. Um, yeah. Okay, um, you mind unmuting Aiden right. Young as well? Okay. We're going to be pitching together. You can unmute yourself. So Jared and Aiden, right? That's his presentation. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, basically, we're kind of we have a lot of ideas, like some games, app, multi-page web pages, responsive web design, interactive educational coding projects, something probably maybe space themed. Um, my skill set is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, ethical hacking, data science, deep learning. Aiden, you want to say a little bit about what your skills are? Uh, yeah, so my skills are uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, just website development, uh, app development, games in JavaScript, and virtual reality, uh, uh, VR, AR games in JavaScript with libraries like A-Frame, 3.js, 
uh, maybe some Python and a bit of PHP too. Okay, so um, we kind of want some people for backend coding, like a uh, backend app, backend web, and we're looking for kind of like six-ish people more. Um, most likely we want four of them to be hardcore backend and then two of them to be maybe front end or content and graphic designers. And you're looking, um, I'm sorry, your idea is um, games and, and learning? Um, so it's, it's kind of, it's very broad, but like apps, websites, interactive education, probably we're thinking something space themed. We don't have a definite idea right now. Okay, so apps, websites for learning right andrea doing a great job yeah. for you actually preparing all right. <laughs> jump board. i want to make sure i capture it correctly yes all right cool Thanks. next that, that was that was jared dugall and aiden presenting but uh i was want just to make sure we didn't skip any over anyone is uh gerard vinez in uh available to pitch oh thank you max yeah i'm here Oh, okay. Oh. Awesome. 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 Thank you for, thank you, Max. All right, Gerard, you're up. So hi, I'm from Spain. So my accent wouldn't be pretty good, but well, still, I think, I hope you'll understand me. And yeah, this is my first hackathon. So I didn't know what I was exactly supposed to do. So I didn't like submit, well, pitch any idea. And I was just like looking for some teammates. So after hearing everything, I'm just gonna contact some people and just try to, I don't know, do my best. And my experience, well, I'm currently like in a bachelor's degree and I'm studying computer science and mathematics. So I'm kind of good at Python, Java, C and C++ coding. And basically that would be it. All right, awesome. So you're gonna join a team, right? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> All right, awesome, awesome. Yeah, you can join. There'll be lots of there's be lots of ideas we're hearing. So that's great. Well, thank you. We have Spain, India, people from all over the place. This is fantastic. Wonderful. Lucky Hudson Valley. <laughs> yeah, that's right, exactly. So who's next on our list, Julia? Uh, I'm so bad with names, so I probably shall call Max to read and do this job for me. Okay, sure. I see Nicholas Needham, right? Yep, Nicholas. Go ahead, Max. Oh, yeah, I mean, if Nicholas is, is Nicholas here, ready to present? Yes, hello. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Hi. Um, so, like a lot of other people, uh, I just got, here in the Hudson Valley at least, not, I guess, in Spain, but I just got my propane delivered for heat and cooking and stuff, and um, it took them like a week and a half after I placed the order to get here. So my idea was to somehow uh, create an app that automates like in the morning, the, the secretary could just run the app and using some sort of, uh, uh, I guess, machine learning would automate the routes for the day to get them done in the most efficient way possible. Because mm, it, yeah. Okay. To automate like delivery for like essential essentials, right? Yeah, uh, I guess it could extend to other industries. It just it it was a little absurd that uh, it took them a week and a half to get here when I'm like ten minutes away. Crazy time, for sure. And you are with someone, right? Or no, you are looking no, for a teammate. I, I just I just signed up. Okay. Cool. Welcome. All right, great. Um, who's next, Max? Uh, Jose uh, Jose Gomez. Are you around? I don't think I see him in the participants list. I do not see him there either. All right, uh, Frangilla or Frangelina? Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, I was the one who did the empathy map on the single mother and I kind of towards the end started my pitch without even realizing it. So my idea pretty much is uh, what I had mentioned in regards to creating a platform 
where students have access to it and can reach uh, specific like other volunteers such as like undergrad students, grad students, um, retired teachers or anything like that who are gonna be able to help them after school hours with uh, homework, um, exam practices and things like that. If it's okay, I would like to share my screen. Not right now. Okay, not a problem. Um, I do have some sort of like design and things like that. A little bit of background about me. I, this is not my field. I am actually a social worker. Um, so this is completely new to me. Um, so I would need like a team from A to Z when it comes to project manager, web designer. Uh, I do know someone for front end developer. I would need somebody for the back end and things like that. Okay, awesome, thank you. That's great. Who's next? Um, I believe it's Noah King. Noah, are you going to um, pitch? I think he's here, right? Let's see. He's in the participants list and he did talk before. Are you there? Yeah. Noah, do you want to pitch and share your idea? Oh, oh nope. He, um, he's just going to join and, and um, experience it as a learner. So I gotcha, that's gotcha. All right, uh, then next up would be Taylor DiNardo. All right, Taylor, are you gonna pitch? Yep. Um, so something that I think about, or, or a, a group of people that I think about a lot during these times are students with learning disabilities um, for whom the online environment has been particularly difficult. And I would like to design an app that functions like a game with its ultimate purpose being to help students with learning challenges build their executive function skills. Um, so executive function entails skills such as prioritization, organization, working memory, task initiation, and more. Um, and so these are some of the most important skills for school. So this app would probably be built in Unity, which I'm familiar with, and would represent the user as a video game admin uh, with the challenges they face correlating to their school tasks. So it would be fun for children. Um, yeah, and hopefully it could help them conquer uh, executive function related challenges. Um, I'm familiar, I, I work a lot with uh, Java, I'm familiar with Python, um, as well as uh, front ends, things like JavaScript, CSS, HTML. Um, yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Mark, who else? Lydia Lambert is next. I think we had Lydia. Yep. Lydia is going to participate, right? She didn't want to pitch, I think. Um, there is a pitch idea in the form. There is? Lydia, do you so. who pitched my idea? Lydia, she, I think she, let me, I have her down here. Yes, yeah, so I have you on here already. Yeah, you did pitch your idea. Sorry about okay. that. Uh, and, then uh, Norbu. Um, yeah, mm, my idea is uh, a social media. So instead of sharing photos and texting, texting or calling, all we need to do is a tap. And then that, like, if I tap my friend and then my friend tap me, then the relationship level between me and my friend will go up. And then if we don't keep tapping each other, then the relationship level will go down. So the idea is uh, we don't have time to, like, uh, ch uh, chat, text messages or call or video call in this pandemic. So it is more simpler. But the other thing is uh, you have to uh, keep tapping uh, your, like your nearest and dears, uh, like that represent you are uh, taking care of them. So that is my idea, but uh, I found some better ideas here. So I, I, I don't know, maybe I, I will join them. Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right, who else we have? Henry Lowengard. Hello, I'm unmuting myself. Um, you may know me from uh, Hudson Valley Tech Meetup. I wrote an app many years ago and still writing it and maintaining it called AMI, which um, lets people who uh, have very little voluntary movement control 
uh, a music program and lets them play and improvise with other people. So uh, what I'd like to do is take this from its, you know, from its current platform, which right now is iOS app. It's been out since around 2013. Um, and turn it into a web app. And not only that, but also integrate it with conferencing system. You know, there are a couple of open source ones like Jitsi um, so that people can still improvise together even though they're stuck in their houses and still uh, there are some other features like that that needed to be put together. I'm making a doc for my army group. But to go and get some people who can help me uh, work on the back end or to go and find and poke around some other APIs and, and packages to make that work um, would be good. And they might need also need the skills to take those and, um, and optimize them because obviously the lowest possible latency is what you want in any real-time musical situation. So uh, that's what I'm looking for. Um, I might get them somewhere else. I can do it all myself, but it'd be nicer to have other people do it. Awesome. Thank you. And Max, we have others. Yep, still a couple more to go. Okay. Uh, next pitch up is Tanner Festa. Tanner? Yep, I'm here. Yeah. All right, go oh, ahead. I, just, I joined just hoping to like experience one new idea I had, which was basically to like, there's like an, there's already a lot of apps that just like tell you like where the coronavirus is around your area. But I just wanted to see if I could like explore an idea to see if I could make it per give you like a percentage of doing an activity based on the coronavirus in your area. Like how much of a risk is it to go to like the store at a certain time period? I'm not sure exactly. Like I was still figuring it out, but that was my essential idea. But I heard a lot of other good ideas too. So yeah, that was basically it. All right, awesome. All right, I got that down there. Great, thank you, Tanner. And I think there's some more Max said. So yep. Max is next. Uh, next up to pitch is Ryan Eng. Okay. Um. Hi. Okay. So um, the idea that you guys can hear me, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So the idea that we're planning, uh, um, me and a couple of my friends are planning is, we're gonna try to create a program or app that helps small businesses reach out to potential clients. So by asking the clients to pick a location and input the things they want to do, for example, clothing, food, et cetera, maybe a theme of food or many other things, or maybe if they want to go to the park, um, we'll just show the potential small businesses in the area that have those attributes. Um, so we found that around where we live, a lot of New York and its small businesses are trying to restart and they're trying to attract um, clients or customers, but they're struggling in many cases to advertise. And at the same time, there are a lot of people out there who have been cooped up at home and they're eager and they want to meet up with their friends again. They want to find a place to meet up, but they might have concerns about safety or there's just only a certain amount of locations they really know about. So I think there's a lot of places that are underrepresented. Um, underrepresented. So um, for our app, well, um, from the user perspective, how it will work is the user can enter um, several keywords, almost like a Google search engine for small businesses. And once they enter uh, several keywords, which could include their location or the um, attributes of the place that they want to visit or what they're planning to do, it will match them to different businesses that have similar attributes or are, in lo or are located in the community or location that they want to visit. And after doing that, the system and or the app could even act as a day trip planner and it can help plot out the different activities it can do after that and kind of just give them a day um, to, of something to do with their uh, friends while also helping numerous businesses at the same time. So it's a win-win situation in that regard. And from the business perspective, it's their job to um, enter the attributes that they believe um, people um, are missing and would most uh, would look look forward to seeing. And in addition to that, um, we would also have to have some sort of objective P, um, uh, rating system. So we'll probably have people going around giving the objective rating on certain things, almost in the like CNET. So that's our idea, and you know, 
um, it, we already kind of have a little bit of a team, but if you want to join, um, we're welcome to accept anyone else. All right, awesome, thank you. All right, Max, anybody else? Uh, is uh, Ayub Rihi ready to present? Yes, hello. Can, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, can hi. You? Can you please pronounce your, your name for us? Ayub, Ayub Rihi. I'm actually from Morocco. Okay, awesome. I, awesome. I didn't want to get it wrong, so thank you. Okay. So I'm Ayub Rihi. I'm from Morocco. I'm tackling a problem that's happened to me which is, um, unfortunately, I, I guess myself uh, to normal life, which is depression. And I took a great lesson, which is being active, new planifications. As, and since I am a uh, data science and first, year, and first year PhD students, I have some skills on programming and analyzing data and uh, the, the artificial intelligence field, like machine learning and deep learning stuff. And my idea is to build uh, uh, an artificial coach, which is um, a system that uh, a recommender system that helps people uh, in depression situation to get out from depression and step by step giving him some recommendation, some daily um, daily uh, things to do in, in their daily life, um, and and that will be depending on how they are thinking, how they type in, type in, in Google, how they search, how they are doing, uh, what's, what, what they are searching in YouTube, YouTube, YouTube uh, maybe. Um, and depending on these key keywords uh, and their psychological conditions, uh, it's like um, a, a robot coach. Um, this robot will, will be improved with, the, with giving data like human coach that takes uh, training, improve their uh, knowledge and skill by time and give him the prominent mot motivation that's gonna push him to do the best planification of the day and maybe get him in contact with another person that passed with the same experience and uh, be happier than before. All right, cool, thank you so much. Let's see, who else do we have on the list? Uh, uh, I'm with the Hibachallah Kabash. Uh, okay, cool. We are in the same team, we are two. Understandable, okay. Then uh, I apologize, we apparently skipped uh, Virma. You want to go now? Yep, no problem. Come on in. Should I type her name? Who is the other person? Wait, uh, I'm yes, type yes, I name. saw. So, um, which of you is going to pitch? Oh, no, no, no. They did. They just. They just pitched for the both of them. Oh. Okay. But um, uh, yes, we have, I... we have a uh, uh, Virma about to go. Yep. Uh, you unmuted yourself, but we can't hear you, unfortunately, right now. There's no voice coming through. Let us see if Christine Rolando is around. Okay. Good idea. Christine Rolando with virtual concert. And hopefully, Verma can get her microphone. Verma, you were not audible. Do we have Christine Rolando around? Yes, no. I don't think and so. And yourself. It's a beautiful idea. OK. Christine's here. Um, while we wait for Verma, um, Max, was there anybody else on the list? Um, yeah, Caesar wanted to present. Okay, Caesar, um, Caesar you yeah. want to present now while we're Yeah, I mean, if that's, that's fine. Um, so my idea essentially was to, uh, it's a, it's a two part. Um, the first part is like during good weather when you go outdoors. Um, essentially it's like a fitness pal where you can be able to arrange places and locations and certain type of workout routines. Um, and you can do that with your friends by keeping social distancing. Um, and eventually, initially it was for the gyms, but now gyms are being closed. So the idea is pivoting where it can be outside uh, workouts. But then now as the 
weather transitioned into a more colder environment, people are not going to want to go outside. So maybe they can have like an in-house workout where, you know, I can be in my home and my friend can be in their home and we can essentially work out together watching the same workout video and being able to see each other as well. Um, so what I'm looking to do is probably have it being a web app, a mobile app, and then even a TV app. Um, or to be able to stream it on the TV so I can see my friend work out, we can work out together, encourage each other to work out and why watching the same workout video. Um, so we, we can post like a YouTube video and that's the workout that we agree that we're gonna do. And we both can watch the same video um, and doing the same workout routine together and being to cheer on and motivate each other. Awesome. Cool. All right. So great applications. Verma, one more try. Verma, you can try one, one more time. I believe she just tried. Okay. If so. Oh, you know what? Verma wants to try to rejoin the meeting. So go ahead, leave okay, it. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Yes. Andrea, is it a good idea you will share your screen or your, how, how does it look what you're doing right now? Oh, sure, absolutely. So let me share. Um, I By the way, sometimes we're experiencing the digital divide <laughs> right here. between sound and video. So it is Are you? a real problem for some people. All right. Am I audible now? Yay. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, great. Okay, it, it works. Okay, great. Um, hi, so I'm Abhishri and I'm from India. Hi. And like I'm in my second year of college and I had this really basic idea. It's about helping the un, like the daily wage workers in India because in this lockdown situation, India has imposed like the biggest lockdown in the whole world. And because of that, all of the daily wage workers and the, the weaker sections of the society, people coming from villages have been facing a lot of issues in you know earning their daily bread. So when I thought about online, platforms like LinkedIn and monster.com and all of these platforms, these are really competitive and really confusing, especially for the people who are on like who are not educated or who don't even know the ABCs of English because it's it's a multilingual country. So I was planning on designing a really basic application with a really like a really simple um, structure where there's like this worker and there is a company. So the worker logs in um, there will be multiple languages, like they can choose whatever language works for them and they can log in and fill in their basic details. And the company part of the, like the company would also register and they would provide like basic job opportunities. They can rate the workers and like a really basic, not something confusing, but a really basic application idea. I, I That's what I came up with recently. And I am really new to, like this is my first ever hackathon. So I am not really like I have I know Java, HTML, CSS, JavaScript and stuff like that. But I was hoping if anybody who wants to work on this simple yet an effective idea, I, I would welcome anybody on board. So that's something that I had in mind. All right. Awesome. This awesome. passionate talk. And, you know, even if you will be not very efficient with the technology, you can always create the Google site sites.google.com just to prototype, just to see your idea implemented visually first as a design thinking maybe? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, anything where we'll, we'll it's, it, this is about um, thinking and creating and building. And if we need to just showcase an idea and put it together, you can prototype, you can prototype right in um, Google sites. Yep, great idea. So let's see. Um, There's a, a couple more people requesting to kind of do some last second pitches. Sure. So, or, go ahead, Max. Do I guess Cole, Cole Nielsen, are, you're up. Are you presenting for the three of you as one pitch? Uh, yes. Yes, I will be. Can you hear me? Yep, okay. we can hear you. Cool. Yeah. Um, so we have an idea for an idea, a, a website. Uh, we like to do a website that teaches uh, parents who are maybe not as tech savvy how to navigate uh, the age of digital, of digital distance learning. So maybe a website uh, that pulls figures, this is for New York State, um, about uh, the rural population versus the city population, 
Uh, we can list for parents um, the basics of a file structure, how to install programs on a Mac versus on a PC. Um, they also a, a list of common and most, most used online web hosting platforms such as Zoom, WebEx, or Microsoft Teams, or common school platforms such as Moodle, Blackboard versus uh, iLearn or Google Classroom. Essentially, the basics of teaching parents who are not tech savvy how they can best set their children up for online distance learning with in-depth guides for Mac and PC. And we could partner with schools in New York State and Hudson Valley specifically, because um, what use is that if your parents don't even know how to get to the website? So we can partner with uh, schools in the area to maybe a few weeks before um, the uh, semester starts to mail out letters to every child's home um, with the basic instructions on how to set up uh, and navigate to the website itself. If I would be a judge, you all won my hearts. You're <laughs> all addressing digital device so dear for me. <laughs> That's what is needed right now. We hey, do yeah. need this. And thank you, Verma, and thank you, others. You actually guys are awesome. But I'm not a judge. <gasps> <laughs> all right, awesome. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to hear. So, um, Max, anybody else on the list or anybody else you caught that expressed an interest to pitch? I, I believe that is all. Um, I do want to add that if you have made a last second pitch, you should still uh, submit the, the pitch to the form so that we have it on the list and uh, other people can find you and, and uh, join up and whatnot. Great idea. All right, so with that, um, Yulia, I'm gonna scare, share my screen and explain the next step. How's that sound? Good? Good. All right, cool. So um, let me move this, let me share. All right, so we're going to use a uh, digital like post-it note uh, application called Padlet. And here you can see a list of all the pitches. For those of you that pitches, I hope I captured your idea um, sufficiently. If I did not, you can all add a comment and fully ex um, explain it a little bit more if you would like. I'll share the link to you. Um, everybody else, I need you to go on, read the ideas and or the ideas that were pitched and where it says add comment, um, you're just gonna add your name. So I'm gonna click here and add comment and I would add my name. And then we are going to use this to form teams, okay? So that's how it will work. I'm gonna share the link to the Padlet. Um, let me just grab the link and um, I'll throw it in the chat. Just a second here. Formally, formally speaking, this is kind of voting or team mating. Yep. process right it's yep. fun yep yeah exactly so go in if if you if i like i said if i didn't fully capture your um okay. pitch, add to it um the folks that pitched and everybody else read through the ideas and indicate which team you would like to participate on if you pitched an idea um and have decided that you want to join a team and said just in the add a comment that says no longer available all right cool Hopefully how many? Everybody. How many do we have so far? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Julia. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go vote for those. Fifteen yeah. ideas to, to vote for. Okay. Link is published in both in Zoom's chat and in Discord chat. Use the Padlet. But all networking, all interactions should go to Discord. That's actually where we can find each other yep. when Zoom will be over. Yep, ultimately we'll be we'll be in Discord. But yes, um, you can just you can't edit the note. Ab I'm sorry, I'm not going to say your name right. I apologize in advance, Abishri. You can definitely go ahead and add to um, the notes there. Just add a comment. You can't actually edit what I started, but you can add. Um, additional comments in the note. 
Um, and Tanner, you asked if um, you can work in a team. Absolutely, join a team. That's what hackathons are all about. It's by meeting people um, that you never dreamed you'd meet and you're gonna build and create and design together. Um, cool, your post has to be published in Discord. That's where people will see you and interact with you. Find, okay, find your Padlet, <laughs> your board in the Padlet. Own it, recruit there, recruit in Discord. Okay. So Andrea, what's the plan next? Everybody well, got in, we're just kind of supporting you to get into this. Yeah, can everybody can everybody get in? I don't see anybody adding anything right now. Maybe people are in. It doesn't show me if there's people in there yet. Are you able I'm to not, I'm not able to get in. It just shows a blank screen. Uh the gradient orange and dark orange screen. I don't see any cards popping up though. Huh. All right, I'm gonna refresh. Okay, now try. And I'm gonna um go back in and make sure I have the, the settings right. It says um I was able to see an update on mine. You yeah, are it, looks, it says secret though. Do you um Yeah, but the secret is oh. just to um yeah, people I think people are able to get in now. I see anonymous test. Yeah, that was, mm -hmm. Someone got it. Okay. It means it's just not publicly available. That's all. Yeah, you don't know who it is, so okay. It's fine. Yeah. So people just add your name to um under a comment. If you have questions, post them there. People can respond in this chat. On Discord, I shall mention also there are active mentors already. So now you can see mentors, mentors rooms, and you can see sponsors. So you can interact there either on specific rooms or channels, or you can interact interact with your potential teammates, which you can see the list on the right. Max, can you communicate how to call by person? In Discord, you just simply... In Discord. Yeah, you just would... Uh use the at symbol just like you would in slacks at and whatever their uh their username is discord will be smart it'll kind of fill it out for you and uh you can ping people you can ping uh roles if you need to ping an organizer or a mentor and uh in addition i also just added in uh last second uh, looking for team channel that uh if you're still uh looking in need of a a teammate or a team to join, uh, it'll be a channel that you can post and try and coordinate that. And back to our schedule, team forming is up. You go, you do, you find your teammates, maybe some will join you later. Uh, we have empathy mapping exercise, or not exercise, actually workout right now now specifically on your pitch right so yeah. how this shall look like who can address this so if, if you have specific questions well just a second if you have specific questions for the pitches you can put them in the chat in zoom um i see some people asking them in the padlet i don't see people signing up though for a team on the padlet so i'm not sure um if it's not working or if people just aren't aren't doing it so i just want to clarify it finally showed up for me. It just took a little while to load up. All right, cool. So just please, please put your names because then I need to. Then we're going to make sure, assign you to a um, room in Discord. Not a room. I'm saying the wrong thing, but. And we will recognize people by team name. Maybe it's temporary team name. Maybe they will come with something different. different. So we're giving them a few minutes right now. Right now, organizing teams.
chatting, interacting. You can jump into the main stage and discuss this by voice on Discord. It's also an option. Jared is calling server side people. Serink is asking Rihi, how are you going to track user behavior on other apps? People are enjoying Padlet to form teams. This is a very innovative way. Thank you, Andrea, for bringing this up. It's very collaborative. <clears throat> Collaboration detected. <laughs> yep, I see a lot of chat going on. So we're going to give people a few more minutes to form teams. It's 416. So why don't we let this go for maybe another five minutes, Julia, so people can decide in an informed way. How's that sound? Good? Absolutely. Right, so 421-ish, four, four we'll, we'll uh, start to nail it down. Then empathy mapping, we will be helping them or how it will look like? How do you think how it will work? Having Tyler. So we, we, have, a, um, we have a new document for them. Ah. They can do the same thing, copy and paste. But instead of big ideas on the bottom, we have a couple of prompts to really understand where the pain points lie and what uh -huh. problems you guys are solving. Um, it's super easy. It's like just like a worksheet you would get at school. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like an open-ended sentence with a box to answer the questions, um, but it'll really help you understand what problem you're solving and who you're solving it for so that, again, you're doing your hackathon with purpose and really focusing on the humans that are going to be um, using whatever you're making. Inspiring. Thank you, Tyler. And actually, why design thinking is so important from judging perspective it's actually it will be judged <laughs> so watch out to make it done <laughs> properly right yeah no pressure this is problem solution match this is issue addressed and empathy mapping is one of the key approach to solve this the best and win the hackathon yeah and you know we're, we work at ibm so from an ibm perspective we don't want to build whatever type of product without talking to the people that are actually going to be using our product because I, like, I'm not a data scientist, I'm not a systems programmer and I don't know what they need and I could make something that I think is super cool and they could be like, this is the worst thing ever. No, thank you. <laughs> and then IBM just, you know, wasted a lot of time and a lot of money building something that nobody's going to use. I like this message. You're <laughs> doing the hackathon with purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's actually addressing the purpose. A lot, a lot of click clack happening. A lot of changes. Look at that. Look at this collaboration in real time. We still have 13 ideas. Some people have pulled their idea from consideration. Um, Patrick's doing a lot of guiding. So that's awesome. Thank you for that, uh, Patrick. Getting people focused and together, building, um, combining similar ideas. Fantastic stuff. When you indicate that you want to participate on a team, um, just write your name because everybody's coming in as anonymous because um, that's the way I set it up. So just like put in your actual name. Actually, right now you're voting for those projects. We might just say there are only team 10 projects <laughs> allowed to pursue, proceed, right? I don't know. Judges are tough. All right, looks like Tarin's uh, joined. Um, are you Rihi and, and his team? What's the else we have? What else we have going on? Uh, Lydia and Taylor, are you teaming up? Are you doing, are you going to be working together? 
Hi, sorry, I'm just having some trouble um, finding some of the people who responded on the Padlet in Discord. So I was a little bit distracted with that, but um, I'm open. I'm open to working with um, anyone who's interested in education technology, particularly for uh, students who struggle with executive function. And we do have special prize, by the way, just a reminder for educational tech. Thanks sponsors. Ooh. Couple more minutes. Couple more minutes. Where are we? 420. Yeah, a couple more minutes. We want to finalize things. Stop sharing for a minute. Do you want me to bring the Dev Post up? Dev, Dev Post or Discord? Either one. You choose. Okay, let's do both. Here's Dev Post. All right. Those are prizes, those are sponsors. Check it out. Oh, we have more than 8,000 in prizes. Okay. 27 participants through, through Dev Post, but you have to be on the team. And I stop sharing with Dev Post. And we'll bring the Discord next. Just to show how it looks like. So we do have announcement. Let me do full screen. This is announcement channel under main stage. And we see, you see people are talking in the main stage right now. So they're voice connected. There is a general stage, general sex channel. So that's where people are communicating. A lot of communication happening here. This is help channel. This is introduce yourself channel. This is guide. If you need anything, that's how to do this. Here is mentors. And here is looking for a team. Wow, special special request, looking for a team. And also just to I'm bring your attention to what's going on on your right. So we do have mentors on your right and we do have sponsors available and you can see who is online and who is who. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult to match make names and avatars, but I hope you can find each other sooner or later. And you have not much time left till tomorrow's 1.45. No pressure. Nope. All right, so two minutes, and we're going to wrap up this piece of things, I think, right? Awesome. Just reading through what we have on the Padlet. Tyler is ready. So we're going to have to put people on their teams in the breakout rooms, or the other thing we could do is uh, present the uh, present the empathy map have that that Tyra created, have her walk through it, and then people could break and go into their Discord rooms and get to work with that particular activity. What do you think? Sure, that's super easy. Uh, yep, I think people, it sounds because there's a lot of activity on Discord right now. It seems like people are already moving in that direction. Woohoo! Discord rocks.
Um, I'm just going to make one quick change in here on the on the padlet. Where am I? I'm bringing this slide. Just to remind, let the schedule. We are entering empathy mapping something. And then we will have one more talk, very short, a sweet one, mm -hmm. before 5 p.m. That's all less remains. We're almost through. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, I think we have. All right, Ilya, I'm going to start to ask a few questions if that's okay. Absolutely. All right, cool. So I just want to make sure that um, these teams are going to run. And if not, just let me know. I want to make sure that we have a team. Okay. So, um, and you could just you could just unmute yourself and let me know. So Cole, do you have a team? Still here? Let's see. Where's Cole? Yes. It's some music for my ears. It is. It is. I know all kinds of noise. All right. So I'm gonna I'll come back to Cole. Um, Abishri, do you have a, a a team? Are you ready to go? Are you going to proceed? Actually, yeah, um, I have Arna who's willing to join it. I haven't really received any other, um, you know, anyone else who's interested. Mm -hmm. So I really don't know how to proceed with that. No worries. We have mentors. So mentors hopefully will help. We will assign you someone. But actually, up history, Arna is the best. She has a lot of experience with Google Sites already. I know for sure. Mm -hmm. She's students of mine. She is the best. All right. Cool. I'm really glad she's interested in the idea. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Angelina. Good to go? Yes. All right. Awesome. Jared and Aiden. Hey, um, yeah, we're just looking for a couple more people. Um, if anybody here we, we really, we're not focused more on back end. We, we have any general programmers as well. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, Lydia, are you joining with Taylor? Oh, okay. Lydia, no longer available, correct? We're going to take that one out or not? No, that's not Lydia. So Lydia, are you moving forward with your project or are you um, teaming up with someone? I think I'm going to team up with Frangelina because we seem to have similar ideas that we could probably work with. All right, cool. So I'm just going to delete this one temporarily and then um, leave, up, leave up Frangelina's. Awesome. Um, let's see. Nicholas, are you going to proceed with this or are you going to join another team? Is he still here? All right, um, I don't know, I don't see him here anymore. All right, so let's see what, who else we have. Um, um, are you Rihi, are you, are you gonna proceed? It looks like it's been a lot of interest on your Padlet. So are you good to go? Uh, yes. Okay, all right, awesome. Let's see then, um, Ryan? Yeah, hi. Do you have a team? You ready? Um, yeah, I have a team. All right, cool. awesome. Um, Taylor? I have a team. All right, great. Tanner, do you have a team or are you going to join someone else? I'm actually not sure. Okay. No, Tanner, we could, we, could, we could take you in. We have spaces. Um, All right, I'll you. What are you doing again? Because I was just looking around. Yeah, um, I'm basically. Wait, does it does it sound like I'm muted? Wait, my microphone's not actually. 
Well, you're on. Good. You're on. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah. Wait, let me... <laughs> okay, yeah. Jared, what were you doing again? Just a refresh. Um, you want to join our group? Yeah, what were you doing? What's the goal of your Oh, group? okay, yeah. So we have, like, a lot of ideas. Um, we're, we're, our group is going to help us choose some of them, but, um, uh, gamer app with, or game app website, maybe space theme, um, learning interactive. We don't really have one major theme. Uh, I mean, if you guys are making like a, we can decide to make an app or something. Yeah. I guess I'll join your group. Yeah, sure. All yeah. right. Great. So Tanner, do you want me to remove your your idea then? Yeah, yeah, I'm not creating my own. You can move that. Okay, cool. All right, and then um Henry. I don't know. I think this might be too tough to do in a hackathon. Okay. So <laughs> you want to um you want to? Uh, Are we going to do small small pieces of it? So you're gonna persevere? No. no? Okay. So you want me to remove it? Yeah, I think I'm gonna just drop out. All right. Or you can join another team. And then I think the last one on here is is Taylor. I don't know if I did, did that again or not, but Taylor, are you good to go? Um. Hi. Sorry. Uh. For the most part, however, if anyone, uh, if there are any gamers out there, any uh, gaming related groups that are interested in joining us, uh, I just wanted to put that forth. Okay. So then it looks like, and then the only other one I see here still is um, um, Cole. Cole, did you, did you have a team, Cole? I haven't heard from him. Because he had a whole little, he had a whole group. Cole's still here, but he mentioned some other people when he um, he presented. All right, so um, it looks like we have teams. How do we want, so we got a couple things to do now, Yulia. Um, get them the empathy map that Taylor created. She can walk everybody through and they can go to Discord um, and start that activity to start to do their planning. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you have a speaker before we, we, we make that transition, though. Let me see if we do have Marina around. Yes, yes, I'm here, if you can hear me. Okay, how many, how much time do you have? Do you want uh, well, five, ten I, minutes? I can adjust, like, yeah, I think ten minutes will be enough, for sure. Okay, perfect. So we have, like, 20 minutes for embassy mapping. Would you want to swivel this around and let the, the sponsors speak first? Oh, so they have yes, time there yes, and then yes, you sure. Can let them it go and play in the empathy maps. That would Good be idea. Good. That'd be awesome. Yes, Tyler, thank you. And it oh, gives sure. more time. It gives more time for matchmaking as well while listening. <laughs> yeah, okay, no problem. Okay, I can, I can start. Um, just let me switch on the video and I will be already. Good. It looks like we will be on time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm ready. Just let me know if you can see me. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, thank you, Julia, especially for uh, inviting Data R to be a sponsor in this event. Uh, very nice. Uh, I mean, this is just additional plus to that this event is uh, linked to the Hudson Valley tech, tech community. Uh, I like personally Hudson Valley very much. This is my most beloved upstate area. Uh, so that's great. And, um, and I also welcome all the participants of the hackathon and all those people who um, helped to prepare this. Um, I will be quick. Uh, Juliet, will, will you will you help me to present my slides, or I can uh, I can share my screen quickly. Share your screen. Okay, it's the please. easiest way. Okay, no problem. Just let me know. Just let me know that uh, you can see. Yes, you're on. Yes. Okay, because... great. Uh, so uh, uh, my colleague Alexander Chernichenko, who is the head of uh, EdTech 
in data art, he provided a brief, brief description of what is data art, but I will be very short as I promised. <clears throat> uh, data art, we, we are a global software engineering firm. We are basically with a company of engineers. We have engineer culture and uh, one of our values, uh, the most important of our values, uh, values is people first. So we are very much people oriented and uh, specifically engineers oriented company. Uh, what we do, what we build uh, software for our clients, both new products and applications and also remodeling and getting rid of uh, legacy re-architecting uh, applications that our customers have. Uh, also, we are providing technical expertise uh, in the area of software development and we are providing people when on demand to our clients. Uh, we are 3,600 people now and uh, we are located all over in the United States. We are in New York and Dallas uh, specifically. And uh, besides that, we have 18 other locations in Europe uh, and Latin America. Uh, we are famous in the market for our deep knowledge of the industries. And the industries in which we are working, um, they are finance, healthcare and life sciences, uh, travel and hospitality, media and, and entertainment, uh, retail, and some other industries. And um, there is some meaning why I'm mentioning them because I wanted to present some uh, view of how it affects technology today. So um, uh, I just wanted to briefly express how from the company who is in in the sector of IT services, how this year has been. So <clears throat> every, every, everything was great in January, February. Well, not in this specific country, uh, China was <laughs> in lockdown already in January, but no one expected that it will take so much time and that it will unhold on the whole world, right? So um, March, April, uh, I was, uh, I have been the participant of uh, dozens of meetings where industry members have shared that there is a lot of uncertainty and uh, what happening, what, what is affecting us as a company is that companies were not sure if they can really spend their budgets on IT. Um, however, cloud-based solutions, and this is mentioned on the slide, were still taking place. No one was cutting budget on cloud-based solutions. That was always very re relevant, even in March and April. But some non-mission non, non critical areas, they were a little bit cut and clients uh, freezed the budgets on that. And no one was, basically no one knew what to expect and how much time this quarantine stages it will take and if it's right to spend money now or, or the companies will need it later. So it affected definitely us um, as, as, a, as, as a company who's providing IT services, we, as many others, uh, as basically all of the companies we were providing discounts for our clients, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what we, have, what we are now observing, this is more interesting. Uh, we are observing first delayed demand uh, actually, there is now a spike of projects that we are working on. So the, the number of projects is unexpectedly high. Basically, this September has been the record month for data art in terms of the uh, work that we have provided for our customers. So a lot of delayed demand. All companies that were thinking about doing something, they delayed it until now, and now they kicked off a lot of the projects. Um, and what else, obviously, and this connects us to the theme of today's uh, discussion, uh, digital transformation actually accelerated in 2020. And as one of the, I guess, uh, people from Microsoft said that we have seen uh, basically seven year worth of digital, digital transformation acceleration in two months. That's what happened. And it affects a lot of uh, sectors. And I, I was trying to get together some uh, examples of how it affects sectors in which we are, data art is, uh, uh, is knowledgeable. So uh, travel, uh, travel. Everyone knows that uh, there is a lot of effect on travel. You can see here some uh, specific technologies that will be, develop will be developing uh, much faster than if they 
if there is no COVID, right? So like contactless tech and uh, digital check-ins and some c crowd control in the airports, um, uh, basically voice activation so that you just uh, no touch at all, right? You need to do everything by your voice, voice control systems. So this all has been accelerated. So travel companies are developing these technologies. Healthcare, there is no even obvious uh, that telehealth has finally got its place on the market and it will now go back. Uh, online retail, you all experienced that yourself, I'm sure. Uh, entertainment, uh, there is a huge demand for in-home entertainment right now. A lot of apps uh, that uh, help you to entertain you at home. Uh, at tech, uh, so my colleague Alexander talked in length about it today earlier when he was presenting data art but uh, I think that uh, you can, exp this is why actually this hackathon is of such importance uh, to us because we want to support the programs that uh, will help to, uh, to handle the difficulties that a lot of stakeholders on, in the education market are facing, right? Those, uh, all the challenges uh, of the remote, remote learning, or, and uh, a lot of uh, challenging in how to do this curriculum, this, this uh, uh, new curriculum that needs to be interactive and uh, new online classrooms. So we as a company are interested to support that. And this is why actually this hackathon is of our interest and, and uh, we are participating in this as a sponsor. And across the industry, well, uh, I just wanted to mention that data art has a very significant expertise in uh, cloud, we are working with all three most famous uh, cloud platform providers, Amazon Web Services or AWS, Microsoft Azure and the cloud, uh, Google Cloud platform. Uh, we are very famous for, we are good in that and we have a lot of uh, engineers who are cloud engineers and who are good in that. So we are providing our clients this expertise. Uh, and the last one, uh, I just wanted to briefly mention how the new world uh, what challenges it presents and what opportunities basically it presents to us. Um, so all of us will experience, uh, I think, uh, the global reshape of the labor markets. Those, those people who uh, were just, you know, for example, living in small towns and were looking uh, for job in their small towns, they can be hired now by global companies. So this, this is a very significant reshape that I think will affect the way how the labor market is structured in a very significant way, in the way it hasn't actually affected it for the past few decades, at least. Um, good for you that you're in technology. Technology jobs are booming. Uh, there is boom in all kinds of technology jobs, such as... Uh, just generic jobs such as software engineers, software architects, uh, not, not mentioned business analysts and QA, all of that is of great demand now in the United States and globally. Uh, uh, there is some niche jobs that if you are into that, this is basically, I would say even better because you will have even more demand from employers if you know machine learning and artificial intelligence or you are good in UI UX because of, all of this digital transformation affects uh, client-facing uh, applications. Cloud engineering, as I mentioned, cybersecurity is booming. And uh, to know industry is always appreciated by employers. Anyway, uh, to keep it short, uh, thank you so much for being here and for working uh, on these uh, new uh, projects that will help us to handle the challenges that we have. And if you are interested to talk to me personally or you're interested in jobs that we have, please don't hesitate to uh, contact through this email list that you can see on the screen. Awesome. Thank you. It was great. And I shall appreciate <laughs> more the fact it was not like pitching the specific company, but just the trans observation is a piece of wisdom shared with you. Thank you, Julie. Okay, so we are blessed with the right team right here. Okay, great. Uh, guys, good luck then, and uh, let's stay in touch.
Andrea, you are the commander. Unmute yourself. You're muted. I know. Okay. So um, we're going to transition now from the more formal part of the program to the part where we, we get working. Um, looks like we have teams. I'll stick around here on the main stage once we do leave, but to help us transition, Tyler um, has an, um, a, an empathy map um, to help sort of guide the transition from this pitching and this ideation part of the hackathon to really starting to design for that person that's going to benefit from your solution. So um, Tyler, why don't you explain the empathy map and then after you're done, um, I'll transition everybody to Discord um, into the meeting rooms. Perfect. Um, so you guys have already seen the empathy maps before, so it's not gonna be a surprise for you, um, but I'll just prompt you with a question. I know, or, you know, a little anecdote, you know, I'm sure that you guys have all been in the world. You've seen a product out there and you're like, why would anybody buy that? Why did someone make that? or you bought a product that you were excited about and then you started to try to use it and you were like, this is dumb or this is really hard to use. Um, that's why we use design thinking in the real world so that we're not wasting our time building products that no one wants or building products that people can't figure out how to use. Um, so like I've been saying, it's important to design and build with purpose. So we have another empathy map exercise for you. So now we're not gonna give you your user persona um, it's up to you guys to identify the primary user for whatever you are hacking, whatever you're building. Um, so I heard someone say parents, parents have a hard time with navigating a website, I think. Um, so they wanted to design for, for a parent. Um, that's perfect. That's great. Um, that'll be your primary persona. Um, but the rest of you guys think about who the main person you are designing for is. Um, you know, it, it could be a couple different people, but just focus in on one for this exercise and really level set on, you know, who that person is and what their pain points are. So once you do your empathy map, same as before with your team, we'll send you this Google doc, just paste it into a new Google doc for your whole team. Once you fill out your empathy map, we're going to have you fill out just a pain points and needs section. Um, it doesn't have to take super long, five, 10 minutes just to really level set on the problem that you're solving so that you're not just designing something and building something that you think is cool. You're actually gonna be solving a problem for a real person. Um, so you'll see the prompts are, it's hard for our persona to, I don't know, it's hard for them to navigate this website. It's hard for them to know where it's safe for them to go shopping. I don't know. Um, our person currently struggles with, it's a similar question. If it's the same answer, totally fine. It's just framing the question in different ways to see if you, you think of things a little bit differently. Um, our persona hates it when? Think about some pain points they have. What are they not like? Similar question, different ways. Um, you know, our person wishes. What does your person need? Um, what does your person need to be able to do? Um, maybe they wish that their kid would wake up without them having to prompt them to wake up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, our persona's life would be easier if we gave them something. Um, so really think about the problem that you're solving. It should be a real world problem based off of your own observations of the world around you. Um, so again, this should just be like five, 10 minutes for your empathy map, five, 10 minutes for your pain points and needs. And just make sure that you're aligned as a team around your purpose and what you're doing and whose problems you're solving and what those problems are. So I think Andrea has the link to this and she'll share it somewhere uh, and she'll send you into your breakout rooms. Yep, I got one more thing to add. Give me one second. Okay, I think we're good. So what I'm going to share next is when, as we transition, um, to Discord. I have um, rooms assigned based on who pitched, who, who pitched. Um, so I'm going to uh, give you the room that you're assigned to in, in Discord along with the person who pitched. And also in here is the link 
to the empathy map that Taylor just walked us through. And I just want to clarify a couple things before we, we, we move on. So the main stage will be closing um, shortly after everybody leaves to go into Discord. There's mentors available in Discord. There are organizers available in Discord so you can ask questions. So there's a lot of activity in there right now. It seems like people are pretty comfortable in that environment, which is, which is fabulous. Um, yes, yeah, so the Caesar, will the rooms be based on the name of the person who pitched the idea? Yes, that is. So that's what it is. So this way you'll know where to go. So I am going to share this right now um, so that you all have the documents and the room. So room one, Cole, room two, Avantry, room three, Caesar, room four, Rihi, room five, Jared and Aiden, room six, Ryan, room seven, Frangelina, and room eight, Taylor. Um, it's in the chat. The link to the document is there. And um, go, plan, build, create, design, talk about your user, all those fabulous things. Reach out to your mentors, reach out to the organizers with questions. Also, if you want a private chat, just go to the organizers and request that and they'll set that up for you. So you have a private chat there as well. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, put them in here for now until everybody leaves and, and, and goes to Discord. All right. Um, Sure, it sounds, oh, so it's, Caesar, you don't have a team. All right, sorry about that confusion. All right, cool. So he's gonna join, um, if he doesn't have a team, he's gonna join room seven, got it. All right, that's all I got now. Um, I'm hanging out, so Saring Rihi is in room um, four. So Saring, make sure you go to room four. All right, ask any questions there. If not, I'll see y'all later and you can go. And, and oh, tomorrow morning, Yulia, quick. I, I yes. Let know. <laughs> yes, tomorrow. What we're doing tomorrow? Mentors will be available at the morning. Start, starting 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The business mentors for sure. So this is like mentors on duty. Please be there. You have to see his hacking. You have all these links where, when, how in Discord as well. So that's the schedule for tomorrow. Once again, thank you sponsors. This was awesome to have you supporting this innovative experience. Thank you, participants. You were brave enough to do these things. Here is one again, once again, our sponsors. And saying that, great job, everyone. All right, we're so about to launch. Yeah, absolutely. So go join Discord and um, we'll meet up there. Cool, and if not, and, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you.